Hello people, it's Blitz here. Welcome to another episode of Blitz Gaming. We're playing Star Trek, part five of the Discovery series. We're at Patho. I'm going to do the mission, Illusions of Communication. So from the last mission, you'll remember we're fighting Tilly and the Telen Empire. She's on board the ISS Discovery and she's taken over the planet below. So we've got to just basically go and take her out. Based on my readings, I believe the Terrans have managed to alter Pavlov's song. Somehow Tilly and her crew have manipulated it into a new type of harmonic waveform. This waveform is potent enough to realign the space around the planet, shifting it to a different quantum signature. As a result, a number of interface of rifts have opened within the system. I believe she is attempting to bring things from the mirror universe to ours. Logic suggests an invasion force, based on previous encounters with the Terran Empire. We are not the only ones interested in this behavior. The time-displaced Klingons are moving to investigate as well. Considering previous encounters, the situation could become volatile quickly. You can see at the bottom there, we've got our new rotation shield. We'll use that in the, in the next fight. Basically, what it does is, um, whoever's got the best shielding, it rotates it round to the, way, the worst one is. They constantly all start to use shields to take in damage equally. So we've got survivors from the damaged ship, uh, which I think was blown up. We should bring them across, straight to sit bay. No problem at all. the next fight and so again. One more to go. Let's finish them off and get down on the planet. Okay, all Klingons dead. Save the survivors. the coordinates for the 
science station at the surface. It's logical to assume that the Terrans have taken control of the research team and the facilities. It is logical to assume that the Terrans have taken control of the research team and their facilities. Preparing for an armed response will be prudent. So down we go with a squad. And with the away team that is. We take out Tilly and a band of Terrans. The research facility has already been attacked. We must see to the welfare of the researchers, if any survived. Okay, just need to click on these three people. Your assistance is appreciated. Simple job. I have recovered. You know, your medic should be doing that. Will be better. My injuries are not we are like threatening. fortunate that the Terrans did not kill everyone. They were more concerned with our research data and equipment. Our work appears to have given the Terrans what they need to communicate with Pavo in ways we cannot. They are now able to alter the planet's consciousness, causing it to reflect their own dark nature. Our security personnel should remain with us. We will need all the help we can get against the Terran forces. While trying to communicate with the planet, we have learned that it uses crystal matrices as transmitters. We have a small collection of crystal samples. They may be useful to re-establish the planet's normal biosphere free from Terran influence. I was able to take readings of the area. Terran technology is not subtle, especially agonizer gear. I am reading it in several nearby locations. A meadow, a riverbank, and a narrow pass. I am also reading several Terran life signs in those areas. I do not expect a warm welcome from them. There is a canyon that exits to another glade of Pavan life a short distance to the south of here. Logically, the Terrans would seek out places where they can use their technology to attempt to subvert the planet. Well, I certainly don't plan on having a party with them. That's for sure. As we click on it, just a little circle on the ground, and put another crystal next to it, and with luck, it goes into a dead one. Perfect. Now we meet the bad guys. Graphics is not too bad on this mission. Easy up to date mission at the end of the day.
We should continue before the Terrans send reinforcements. Curious? I sense something. They are attempting to communicate telepathically. Fascinating. The Terrans have used their agonizer technology to induce a state of hostility in the Pavan biosphere. It is lashing out, using its empathic powers to project its pain and rage into other living beings. If the Terrans are able to do this on a large scale, the planet could serve as a massive telepathic weapon. It would be able to subvert or kill anyone, anywhere. We should disable this technology wherever we find it on Pavo. I think I'm going to use the word fascinating. A bit scary. An interesting question. I believe the biosphere has a stronger connection to myself and my team. It may have instinctively struck the most familiar minds first. That being said, I do not believe it will continue to exclusively attack the members of my team. Only those with the ability to harm the biosphere will be immune. Yes. Now that I have experienced the psionic attack, I can take steps to shield my mind against it. The security officers, on the other hand, do not have my level of training in the mental arts. It would not be logical for them to continue on with us. Let's start screening. I'm about to turn the interface off. Press Alt and F12. Turn the UE off. And F12 takes a screenshot. Now you've seen all those green boxes come up a second ago. Uh, if you press Control F12, you get the interface come up and allows you to move all the boxes and resize the boxes around around the game. And you can see the way the game is quite old. Trying to go over a stone is can be hard work.
I just had the old shield generators to my counter and the other one we give to one of our away team members. It seems that in addition to using their agonizer technology on the planet itself, the Terrans are blocking access to the central pillar with force fields in selected areas. Doubtless, they wish to prevent interference in their captain's plans. So, need to load the shield. No problem, there's the interface. I ain't got to go far to find it. The problem with this game is very easy to find everything. It's pretty really. It's not really challenging in any way. for you to continue, Captain. Whatever you are doing to Pavo needs to end. Ah, the famous Vulcan logic. Get it straight. Pavo and I, we're just getting started. Oh, and that part about sending my best at you? I lied. This mission I find is a bit buggy, I'll let you know. Now this will be a real treat for me. I've only done this mission once, and the idea is to try and turn that uh, interface off. So we'll go up to the spire and turn the controls off. But I've not managed to get up there and find anything worth to turn off. You can see this one don't do nothing. So I'm not quite sure where I've got to go. There's definitely nothing going on here. But, uh, obviously, uh, might as well try and finish Tilly off now her shield's gone down. The last time I played it, I was killed. Uh, I ran back. And when I got back, the mission was over. So I'm not quite sure how to finish it properly. As I said, I think it's buggy. Well. This is definitely not how I saw this ending. You know it's only a matter of time. Before we beat you, right? 
You don't have the stomach to stop us. But we're more than capable of ending you. And I intend to make that happen. That seems unlikely. Your campaign of terror here is over, Captain. Oh, I'm not done yet, Vulcan. Till next time, you assholes. Fascinating. Interesting. She has somehow used Pavo's transmitter as a long-range transporter. Tilly could be anywhere in the quadrant now. If we are fortunate, we might find further clues among the Terran equipment. They did go to considerable trouble to arrange this site. I don't call that a first name. She escaped. So now we've just got to run down to the boxes. I did notice something here. If you don't take everything out of here, regardless if you want it or not, the mission won't end. So uh, make sure you take all your inventory out. The triple, by the way, uh, they're good. Um, they breed. So you might think you've got like 50 em empty spaces in your inventory. You've got a triple, you keep breeding, and your inventory gets smaller and smaller. But as they breed, they um, they give you benefits, like health boosts, attack boosts, and all sorts of stuff if you want to keep them. And here, it may be advisable to return to your vessel so that we can deal with the situation in local space. Firstly, I don't use dribbles. As I said, I use up inventory slots, and you never got enough inventory slots. Now that you have secured the research position, we must find a way to return the remaining Terrans and their vessel to their proper time and space. We can use the Ion Storm to send Discovery back. Specially modified probes can amplify the storm in specific locations. This can generate a localized ion effect and open a gateway to the proper point in space and time. Indeed, especially given the Terran predilection for hostility. Okay, I need to sort out Discovery, send it back to our own time and space, and probably fight Klingons afterwards. Display has been updated with the locations to place probes around Discovery. Once the probes are in place, they will trigger an ion flare to open the gateway that will take Discovery back. Agreed. The time displaced Klingons are still out there, and they have shown a distinct interest in destroying the Discovery, along with all of us.
what do you think about it? We could use it to be go back to our own time. Back to 150 years. But we'll be in the wrong space zone. Short trip. Shields are critical. We're losing them. Emergency power to shields. Now. Somat to discovery. Prepare for transit. Probes are in position. Activating in three, two, one. Engage. The Ion Storm has cleared, and we're receiving standard readings from Pavo. It's broadcasting its song as normal. No aberrations, no distress calls. It would seem things are returning to a calm, peaceful level. Once the research team is able to resume their duties, we will begin to analyze the impact of Agonizer technology on the Pavan ecosystem. Considering what we have just witnessed, it will be logical to make sure Tilly and her crew didn't leave any unexpected surprises on the planet as well. For now, I believe we can safely depart the system. Mission complete. Now we're going to do something else. It will take some time to evaluate the impact of the Terran occupation of Pavo. The agonizer technology they used to manipulate the planetary biosphere was invasive and damaging. I am concerned about the effect it had upon the Pavan ecology, and how that will affect future attempts at interaction with the planet. The fact that Captain Tilly remains at large is troubling. Her technological prowess and propensity for violence should make her presence in this time quite disruptive. Should she acquire current technology and return to her own time, it is possible that she will rewrite history as we know it, turning our universe into one more like her own, if not worse. In the meantime, we both have our duties to attend to. It has been agreeable working with you. Live long. The next episode is not available yet. Uh, it's not being released, but we will do it as soon as it comes available on this ship. Well, this character, but we will have another ship. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Oh, 
I should make a mistake here. I should have got the engineer, not the science officer, because the ship we buy next is an engineering ship, and we've got a space for an engineer. And because I've got the science officer, I can't use her. But it's not a problem. I should borrow a character from my other tunes because I've got plenty of them left over. And I will show you that um, how to do that in the next episode. You can see here they've got plenty of abilities. Just kind of trying to go through one what we can use. I mean, I can still use the the um, science officer on away mission, so I can switch them out uh, to what we want to use. But there's no space on the bridge of the ship. So at the moment it's greyed out there. I'm not quite sure why it's greyed out. That's yeah, because we're not high enough. To, to pick what we want. So just checking the abilities of the characters we've got to the one we can have. So I thought, okay, the, the science officer has got better abilities on the ground for healing. So I thought we'd take them but uh, we can't use them on the ship. As I said, I've got no problem fixing that in the next episode. History is often the means to predicting future conflicts and resolving them as peacefully as possible. The history of the Federation and the Klingon Empire is heavily dominated by our conflicts. Centuries ago, they were dedicated foes. The Klingons nearly brought the Federation to an end in the middle of the 23rd century. As we move into the future, understanding the Klingons may keep us out of another such conflict. We have a mission simulation for you to undertake that revisits one of the famous conflicts of that era. Join a task group to participate in that operation. Okay, we're going to do our first TFO. Since we're not made level 10 yet, uh, it should get us a level 10. You can see here, uh, and another thing we can do with, um, we've got too many bridge officers. We can turn them into a manual. Or you can commission them to join your crew. So if you go through here, you can actually see what they've got. And we can... Crap manual. So what they have, and we can actually then use that manual to train a character, uh, a science officer, um, in an ability they don't have. It saves you buying the ability at a high price. And if you go onto this screen, you can actually see what you can actually make, all the manuals. I mean, when you first start in. You never got enough crew members, and obviously, when your time you get to level sixty-five, you got way too many crew members, and you got nothing. Don't know what to do with them. Yeah, so when you do a TFO, it's like an instant dungeon. You join other people playing the game. It's a good way to get XP and earn money, and you also find out they're all different levels. I mean, they could all be up to sixty-five. So you find out I'm a wimp and there's going to be a lot of players in there a lot stronger than me. But the game scales, so when I'm shooting, I'm doing little damage because they've got very wimpy weapons. And when they shoot me, they're not doing massively huge gigantic damage. But when they're level 65 to shooting them, they do a lot more damage than me. It's quite weird the way it works, but that's the best way to explain it. If you look in the top left corner when the game starts, You'll notice that the enemy are level 53. But when they, as I said, when they fight me, they're not actually like level 53. Otherwise I get blown to pieces in one shot. Listen up. 
The war has not been going well for the Federation, and the Klingons are advancing to our position. We need to hold off their ships until reinforcements can arrive. We expect the Klingons to attack in waves. Their smaller, faster ships are hungry for battle and won't wait for the rest of their fleet to arrive in one group. As the fight progresses, their heavier ships will show up. Hold them off until more Starfleet ships can get here. Nice Galaxy class ship. See everything's being blown up pieces before I can even shoot. That's what happens when you're level 65. You do lots and lots of damage. Now I'm doing absolutely twiddle damage at my level. But you can see when they're shooting me, I'm not getting blown up pieces out of the galaxy in one shot. Again, it's all to do the way the game scales. These lock boxes will drop. Uh, you can keep all of them. I personally don't collect any. You need Zen to open them. You've got to get master keys. And it's basically a lottery. Depends on what you get. I mean, you can get the top range uh, ship in there, including the Enterprise T6. It's the only way to get the Enterprise T6. But all the best ships uh, come in lock boxes. Like I said, it's a lottery, you can get 50 boxes and get absolutely zero. So that's the reason why I don't bother. I'm not going to waste Zen trying to find the armored weapon. I mean, it's like most dungeons. Ideally, if you work as a team, one can heal another player, boost weapons, uh, do all sorts of stuff. And if you was a science officer, you can do like, crowd con control the enemy. I 
I mean, ideally, if you did a, if you wanted to play as a team, you can do private versions uh, where you're only open to your friends. So you can do all the TFOs just as, uh, as your mates and don't let nobody else in. The Klingons are regrouping again. An evacuation ship is launching. Give them cover. So the idea of this mission is one to save the space station. You can see these arrows going down. That's a shuttle escaping. And the idea is to uh, save the shuttles from being blown to pieces from the Klingons. I mean, some of the TFOs, you've got objects you have to do, like open gateways and things. Stop things being blown up uh, on a certain time period. Complete, start the goodies. Use that later right date, our reputation points. Let's collect our ward. Saving the day. Now we're level 10, we can get a new ship. Now we get a mission at level 10 to go and collect our new ship. So we go to our space dock. Just in case you're wondering, you must be level 10, you won't get it otherwise. And if you cling on, uh, you go to a. Uh, can't remember the name of the person now, but you've got to go to Kronos. We have a diplomatic mission for you. An important Vulcan ambassador is traveling from his homeworld to the monastery at Pajem. Capturing the ambassador would be a major coup for the Klingons or Orions, so we're assigning you to make sure everything goes smoothly. You are to escort Ambassador Soketh to Pajem. Please meet him at Vulcan. Once you locate him, speak with him about the transport mission. Do whatever is necessary to keep him safe. Okay, just picking up the next mission. First, we got our next ship. 
before we go down. So we go to the ship person. That's the lady on the left. And there's the constitution for the cruisers, for the engineer. And you can see there we've got two engineer bridge officer slots. So that makes it the engineering ship. It's going through the different config configurations you can have as a constitution. And it also shows you the console uh, slots. So we can have, as under the engineering, basically it's like anything with repair ship, armor. And then we go on to the tactical ship. That's got two tactical stations, two tactical uh, console slots, so you do more damage. Well, there's plenty of ships, and you can mix and match them from the person next door, uh, where you can actually go and uh, customize the way your ship is. So you can have literally different nacelles and different bottom half, different sources section. Make your own version up at, at the end of the day. And this one's a science ship. Again, lots of configurations. Just remember when you're buying a ship, make sure it says that your ticket says um, price is one, you have one token, and you've got one for free. Otherwise, you might end up buying one of these if you've got the Zen by accident. And this one's uh, another constitution. This one's 750 Zen. And you probably see what's the difference between this one and the last one. Well, this one comes with an extra science station. So um, a bonus to buy one, but to be honest, I don't buy any ships unless they're T6. I don't see the point. Unless you're obviously a Star Trek lover and you want to have a constitution all the way through. And these are the other ships you've got to pay with Zen. I mean, there's one more ship on there, which is a light cruiser, uh, which is a Miranda class. There's no point buying that because you actually get given that. Um, if you're doing the normal missions, you start off with a Miranda class. But we've obviously done Discovery, so we've got the weird Discovery ship, and so on. So now when we've got the ship, now what we've got to do is got to transfer stuff from our old ship to the new ship, see what's best out of two. Just deleting items we don't need. Delete the 9th anniversary um, vouchers because we've already done the mission. Everything looks okay. So then we move over to this guy, the ship manager. And you can see on the list on the left hand side, we have our constitution. And see our, our slots we've got. So now we've got. Two weapons in front, two weapons at the back. So now we've just got to transfer stuff over. Open up the inventory box. Get rid of all the trash. I mean, you can still keep your old ship if you want to keep it there for have fun, play a mission at a later date. If you delete them, by the way, you can't get them back. I mean, the ones you buy, I mean, they're obviously available. If you delete it, you can always get one back. But these ones you get for free, if you delete them, you can only get them back if you make a new character or purchase one. If you're wondering what the box in the bottom left hand corner is, 
keeps changing with a chat on it now because that's the chat box because it's an MMO at the end of the day massive multiplayer online game there's obviously there's people talking about the game and God knows what else around the, around the world now, so you need to check what's best and what's not best I mean, the majority of the items I've got in inventory are better than what the ship comes with. Because what you start off, we start with white level, green, blue, pink, uh, like an ultra pink, then yellow. And obviously yellow does a lot more damage than white. And it does not just more damage, yeah. They have extra abilities when you go down the chart. Like the phases I've got at the moment may just do damage. You might find a phase of it in the future, um, like a pink one. It doesn't just do damage, it does, uh, it stuns the enemy for five seconds, may take their consoles out of line for five seconds, and so on. So there's a ship done. Now I've just got to go over to the uh, your crew members. So now you've got your starship. You've got to check here, make sure everyone's set. I will change these um, around. I'll still have in a heavy duty torpedo. I'll just change that to multi torpedo. Because I'll, I'll rather do multi torpedoes and hit several times at once. The science ability, I will change that to another hill, because science disc can heal. And being obviously um, a cruiser, we want all the healing power under the sun. And I should get another engineer and have him as a healing ability as well. So I will just that in the very near future. So let's look at around Starbase. Right, so this is Q. He's on his event. This place here is the Orch. If you want to buy or sell stuff, this is where to go. Show you how it works. The exchange, as they call it. So it's basically got things on the left-hand side. Search what you want. If you know the name of it, you can put it up the top. It comes up with all the prices and what people are selling items at. And you can obviously make items. And that'll be another thing at a later date. Because we ain't got no items to, to use anything to make anything at this time. And we come around here, we got your bank. And you got a mailbox. So we look in the bank. So well, it's is empty because we've got nothing in it. This is my account bank. We have an account bank. If you subscribe for a month, you get an account bank. I'll let you know. It doesn't disappear once you subscribe. Unless they've changed the rule since then, I can't remember. Here comes a trader. Let's sell some crap we got. As you play the game, you get up, you've never got no inventory. You just, items after items after items, you end up picking up. So, most MMOs, I suppose. Never got no inventory screens um, spare. You're in the auction house, or exchange, as they call it. I mean, you can buy T6 ships in there. What people are selling. Uh, the ones that they got from lock boxes. But they are... They probably start off around 200 million. And we've got like 500... Space credits. So we're miles away from... Possibly buying a box. 
and the lockbox ship. Yeah, I mean, you can make yourself super powerful. I mean, I've seen uh, people where they've all their items on, on their ship are basically yellow, the top of the range stuff, and absolutely annihilated everything within seconds. I mean, you can play like that if you want. I mean, personally, I just look at it as a game. I'm mean, come on here, have some fun. I don't believe we're going in a mission and destroying everything in like 60 seconds. I think well, that's a bit boring. I want to have some fun. If it takes me five minutes, it takes me five minutes. That's why I like playing. I mean, if a game's getting too easy for you, you can always put it on a harder level. And obviously, all the upgrades you make um, cost delivium. And personally, I thought, in my opinion, if I've got enough delivium, I'll possibly rather buy another ship. Even though I don't, these days I've not bought a ship for 12 months. Uh, the reason being because I've got too many. So on here you can buy weapons, hand weapons, uh, armor as well. Uh, it's one of those things. I think when you're low level, save your money, don't bother, because you get loads and loads of items dropped as you level and quest to give you uh, equipment. I mean to get the best stuff you need one, you need to be in a fleet uh, because that's where all the best space equipment and consoles are for your for your starship. But you need to join a fleet. I won't I don't suggest actually making your own fleet because you're never going to have any money and you're never going to have no delivery to buy anything to update your ship. So this is the upgrade screen. Um, basically you click on a weapon. Why it's below level 12, it doesn't cost you delivery. Anything above level 12, you've got to pay with delivery. But again, it's not no point doing that yet because we get plenty of weapons at this level so it's pointless updating anything. Now wait till you're 65 and well 50 upwards then you can think about upgrading items but the first thing you want to do is buy a new ship at 50 if you've got enough to lift them buy a t6 ship that game there is to do with the event i'll just show you what, it's, what it is and every day well, for like 20 days they make you do the do the event and you've got to go around and collect these local uh tokens which one from that game the game goes on for about 35 days. You only got to collect like 14 or 15 or whatever it is. I mean, some people just are obsessed doing it over and over again because people will actually want to buy them off the auction house from, from you. And the main thing about doing them and getting them, when you come to upgrade your weapons, I think they're like three times more powerful than the, the normal upgrade item. So it saves you a fortune in the long run, but you've, you've got to spend hours collecting those damn things, and I can't be asked. I have done it in the past, but these days I don't bother. So this is just a bar you go to and buy food, drinks, and it just boosts you quite a bit. Your hit points and repair hit points if you're getting shot at. It's basically like a hypo, but this one gives you an extra boost in uh, hit points. So, this is a transport room to go down to Earth, Space Academy. So let's quickly look over to the medic. We missed out the medic. Yeah, if you pay on a a hard level, um, an advanced level, every time you die and your crew members get injured, 
you need to buy. You can collect them through that through missions as well. But if you run out, you need to buy some and you buy these items. Well, when you come to the medic, you don't buy nothing. You just go to the bloke and repair your crew members and yourself. And you also get space items, repair kits for your spaceship as well, which your spaceship always gets damaged. And basically, if you don't fix it, uh, basically, if you go to fire a weapon, it won't fire. <laughs> basically, uh, your crew members are damaged, your weapons are damaged, so you've got to repair your ship constantly. I mean, if you play on normal level, normal level, you do not get no damage at all. Okay, we go to the other side. This is where Admiral Quinn offices. So there's another mailbox, and the other side is the bank. Down below, Admiral Quinn. Everyone asks this question: where the abilities are sold? But this person here, I don't think he's no good to me at the moment because I'm not level 10 and I've got no items to give him. There's yeah, some um, items you can do through the galaxy constantly over and over again and you bring them to this guy and he gives you credit for them. So we go below Admiral Quinn and this is where you buy your abilities for yourself and for your crew members. As you level, uh, you can actually make these, uh, these these items as well, as long as you've got the uh, materials to do so. And obviously, the other thing is that if you get a, a crew member you don't want, you can turn them into a, a manual. Now, the ones at the bottom there, you can see you've got intelligence, command, there's special. Um, abilities for certain ships so you might want to buy a T6 ship and it may be a miracle worker ship or attack op ship um, or command ship a pilot ship and they, they, you buy those abilities on top of the other abilities because they have a console which says command on it or pilot on it and that's how you make use of them and you get to come over here you got the money, you can buy a bridge officer. I think that's about us done, I think. The other room's nothing. And just told you about the game. And we've gone through this already, so we don't need to see it again. There's another person to our left who changes your, your level you want to build. Down below there. If you want to find a hard level, you can change it change it there. Well, that's me done. We've gone around space stock. The next time we have a mission, we will be on the Constitution class. And before we start that, we're going to do the Vulcan missions and make a science officer with a science ship. That's me out, bits out, lights all, have fun. <laughs>